Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It's good to be home and you're here. Good, good, good. I'm glad to see you. It's been so fun to greet you as you've been coming in this morning. If uh, you're new and you're visiting here, uh, my name is Chris Barker. <laughs> I'm the pastor of this church. I feel like a special guest this morning, but uh, we'll get that all figured out before long. Oh, thank you for letting us have our time away on sabbatical, and uh, we are, we're glad to be home. And uh, we'll share some other stories and things with you later. Uh, but I love this song that we were singing, because it really just speaks to the priority of our focus, our focus being upon the person of the Lord Jesus Christ, who has not only saved and redeemed us, but has given us life and whom it is our privilege to love and to serve forever. Would you join with me today, and let's just dedicate ourselves once again to worship Him. Dedicate ourselves to honor Him. For as we choose to come close, as we choose to draw near today, we will not be disappointed, for the presence of God is here among us. Amen. Father, we're so grateful and we're so thankful. You are amazing. You are amazing, and Lord, we are thrilled to come together as the body of Christ and to declare that, Lord, to lift that this day, to proclaim your name, to proclaim your goodness, to proclaim your greatness, Lord, to declare that you are the most high God and there is no one like you. So, Lord, as we gather in this place today, Lord, would you help each and every one of us, Lord, to, to set aside distractions and help us, Lord, to purpose in our hearts Help us, Lord, today to find strength, Lord, just to lay those things aside and to turn our eyes upon you. Lord, knowing that as we come close to you, Lord, with thanksgiving and praise, that, Lord, your presence <laughs> will be made manifest, Lord, in our lives and our gathering today. You will be glorified, and we, your people, Lord, will be blessed. So we thank you. We welcome you. We welcome your work today. We welcome your word today. Be glorified in all that takes place. Be lifted high. Lord, we've come today because we love you. So receive our worship. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, would you take a few moments and greet and bless one another. If you see a new face, would you make sure that you introduce yourself and don't let anybody be by themselves. Let's greet one another.
If you want to go ahead and find your way back to your seats, guys, we're going to get started. Worship Jesus. Father, we just thank you for your amazing presence. Father, I can already feel your presence here this morning. Holy Spirit, we thank you just for moving through this room, touching people. Way before the word comes right now, Holy Spirit, we thank you for touching people, changing lives. In Jesus' name, we thank you for what you're doing. Amen. i 
Can we all just raise our hands? Raise your holy hands. So be lifted up. And be lifted higher. Be lifted up. Be lifted higher. Because I sing praises to
his temple and let our praises fill this temple let our praises fill this temple for you are good sing it to it one more time so let our praises fill this temple and let our praises fill this temple and let our praises fill this temple for you are good would you sing that one more time so let our praises fill this temple let our praises fill this temple let our praises fill this temple for you are good so good so good so good God you're so good God you're so good So we're going to do this next song, and I love this song. It's one of my favorite songs. And it talks about when Jesus walks into the room, everything changes, right? And I've always just, every time I sing this song, we've always sang it in churches, and I always just imagine him just walking down the aisles and just touching people. Whatever they're going through, he just touches people, right? And it changes. And so as we sing this song, can we, just, can we just declare that over our lives? That when he walks into the room, everything changes. There's not a darkness that can go against him. He changes everything. Amen? And when you walk into the room, everything changes. Darkness starts to tremble at the light that you bring. And when you walk into the room, every heart starts burning. And nothing matters more than just to sit here at your feet and worship you. Sing that again. And when you walk into the room, everything changes. Darkness starts to tremble at the light that you bring. And when you walk into the room, and every heart starts burning, and nothing matters more than just to sit here at your feet and worship you. Would you sing, we love you? We love you And we'll never stop We can't live without you Jesus And we love you And we can't get enough All this is for you Jesus Sing when you walk, and when you walk into the room, sit 
sickness starts to vanish every hopeless situation it ceases to exist and when you walk into the room the dead begin to rise cause there is resurrection life in all you do and we Our hearts are yours. We want you. We want you. So come and consume God. All we are. We give you permission. Our hearts are yours. We want you. We want you. So come and consume God. All we are. We give you permission. Our hearts are yours. We want you. We want you. So come and consume God. All we are, we give you permission. Our hearts are yours. We want you. We want you. So come and consume God. All we are, we give you permission. Our hearts are yours. We want you. God, all we are, we give you permission, and our hearts are yours, we want you, we want you, yeah, oh, come and consume, God, all we are, we give you permission, and our hearts are yours, we want you, we want you, we love you. God, we love you. Thank you for what you have done in our lives. 
Thank you for what you're doing in our lives, and thank you for what you're going to do in our lives. God, today we pray for the people in Hawaii who have been affected um, by the fires. We pray that you are that you be with them, that you bless them, that you help them in such a difficult time that they're going through. And we pray for the people here who who are going through situations or have needs, and we just pray that you come into their lives and that you change their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. And God is good, yes? Guys, I'm, I'm trying to talk right now. I cannot right now because that last song, like, man, I don't know about you guys. I felt the Holy Spirit right there. Um, and guys, thank you so much for saying that. That's a good song. Goodness. Oh. All right, guys, so it's my, it's my, my name is Pastor Johnny. I'm the youth pastor here, okay? And so uh, and I'm so grateful to be here at this church uh, with the fellowship and serving alongside each and every one of you to reach our families, our neighborhoods, our workplaces, and our town as a whole. So it's my absolute privilege to be here with you. Um, so if you are new today, uh, we haven't been here in a while, uh, and the pew in front of you, the seat in front of you, there should be a card, okay? And so go ahead and put your information down there. We would love to keep you connected. Keep you connected because you know what? Doing live by yourself, by yourself, it stinks, right? Okay? We have other fellow believers, uh, brothers and sisters in Christ to come alongside you. It makes this walk a lot easier, trust me, okay? And so um, as the usher is getting ready and moving forward, okay, um, go ahead, as they're doing like the offering, go ahead and put that information down in there. And we'd love, like we'll love to keep you connected. Um, and so um, I'm going to first, before I pray over the offering, I'm going to have uh, the high school and uh, kiddos go ahead and be dismissed for children's church and high school Bible study. Okay. That's the best way to name I can describe it besides a really lame name, high school Bible study. Okay. Right. Okay. So if you're in high school, meet me in the activity center. I'll be there just shortly, okay? Um, but I'm going to pray over offering. Um, we're going to going to have an awesome uh, special music, okay? You guys are going to be blessed, okay? So uh, let me just pray over today's uh, tithes and offering. I pray, Lord Jesus, over this time, Father God, I pray that each dollar, each cent, each penny that is given, Father God, that you will multiply it and multiply it so at least one more person can know who you are. So, Father God, so we can give the money not towards the lights, but, Father God, so the light can turn on in someone's light, light, Father God. So, Father God, we love you, and we thank you, and we honor you, and we trust you with this, with this offering, Father God. And let us be good stewards of that offering. So, Jesus, we love you, and we thank you, and we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Ushers. I don't know what Johnny's talking about. We're just going to worship a little longer. You can stand up if you want to stand up. Don't you don't have to sit down if you don't want to. starts to vanish every hopeless situation 
who ceases to exist. Cause when you walk into the room, God, the dead begin to rise. Cause there is resurrection life. And all you do, we love you. And we'll never stop. We can't live without you, Jesus. And we love you. And no, we can't give. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to your name, Lord Jesus. Glory to your name, Lord Jesus. Praise God. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. There's a few of you that have snuck in since we first started worship. Look a little bit different. Good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Would you please take your Bibles and would you please turn to the book of 2 Kings, Second Kings in the Old Testament, chapter 21, 22, 23, somewhere in the early 20s. No. Praise God. Praise God. I want to uh, say thank you to uh, Jerry Mullins and to Gary Ivey and to Joe Newman and to Johnny for covering and, and bringing the word to you each week. Can we let them know we appreciate them? <laughs> Great people. And uh, it, was fun to, uh, it was fun to listen and, uh, and to be able to participate with you. Uh, God, is, God is amazing. God is so, so good. Do you remember this old song? The B I B L E. Yes. Wow. I stand Oh, you guys are old. Wow, wow, I wasn't sure how many would remember it. Sing it one more time with me. I remember too, so I'm there with you. Here we go. The B-I-B-L-E. Yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the Word of God. The B-I-B-L-E. How many are thankful for the revelation of Jesus Christ, for the Word of God? Amen. I'm excited about coming into this time with you this morning, but before we, before we dive into God's Word, I do want to just remind you of a couple things that are really important. First of all, prime timers, if you did not get the news already, uh, we have planned a picnic and a sing-along and 104-degree weather in the park. And so we are not going to cancel. We're going to keep it, but we're not going to the park. We're going to go into the Air Conditioned Activity Center. So uh, come and join us. If you haven't signed up already, sign up uh, out in the lobby as you leave today. Uh, so, cause, so we'll have the picnic prepared. So we'll have enough food for everybody. And uh, we'll just have a great time in fellowship and coming together in worship. And uh, again, just singing the songs of Jesus. Uh, also want to encourage you, boy, coming back. Wow. Man, you are amazing. So many of you have been engaged and involved, and I want to thank my, my uh, board, the deacons. Man, they have continued to run with projects, and things are getting done. It's exciting. And uh, wow, 
uh, kitchen floor stuff was done this last week. Now they just have the seal that comes over that, and then we're going to start seeing things move pretty good with equipment. I do want to note, as far as with the kitchen project, we are running low now on our funds. So there's some things we're having to wait on until we can raise that additional money. And we've done so well together. God has blessed us. We only have $19,000 to raise of that $50,000. So, yeah, that's awesome. That is awesome. I want to thank you and thank the Lord just for His faithfulness. But I want to encourage you, you know what, just mentioning it to you today, and if we will all just pray, God's going to bless through us. God's going to bring it in somehow, some way. The needs will be met, and we'll be able to proceed with that without a hitch. So again, I just encourage you, pray with us. Let's just continue to pray and believe for God to bring that all to pass. I would also encourage you, would you please be praying for a school? And wow, it is just around the corner, and th these buildings, this property is going to be filled with students. Um, we have a couple new teachers that are with us this year, so you, will you be praying for them and for our staff also? Uh, be praying. You've seen the modular that's out there, and we are working on that. Would you just pray? This is all I'm asking you to pray. Would you just pray that God would give us favor? Okay? working on things, have some meetings this week, but we just need the favor of the Lord, and everything will be okay. Amen? Amen. 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 Praise God. So, exciting things happening. The office is in the process of being remodeled. Well, Roger was in there, and Kevin was in there doing stuff, and they make a lot of noise when they work, I want you to know. Came in on Thursday into rat-tat-tat and all kinds of stuff, and uh, but no, actually, uh, appreciate it. The office is looking good. When we are finished, we will have a main entry and reception area at the north end of that modular for the church, and then the school will have their main reception area and entrance at the south end of that building. How many think that sounds like a great idea? It does work a little bit better when it comes to trying to put that many people through one single door <laughs> on a weekly basis uh, as they're coming. So uh, we're excited about that. And then we'll designate some guest parking. And then the landscaping, isn't it beautiful? Oh my goodness, wow, it was awesome. You know, I was a part of all the concepts before, so I knew what was coming, but not in its entirety like that. So it's beautiful, it's almost done. There'll be a school sign coming up there. Then with the new entrance of the church, it'll have a new sign out there also, just catching people right from the roadway. And the church continues to move forward. Amen, as we prepare for this great harvest that is coming, the opportunities of ministry that are before us. God is good. God is good. Exciting, exciting, exciting. Well, I think that was all I was supposed to say except for uh, this coming Saturday, uh, we're going to be gathering here at 11 o'clock to honor a, a great man of God, Dwayne Thiessen, who went home to be with the Lord. And uh, I... Uh, Got to talk with the family yesterday just in preparation and service, but Dwayne has been such, him and, of course, Dolores is with Jesus, but they have been uh, involved in this church, feels like, from the very beginning. And uh, I was looking yesterday at just the number of pastors that they sat under here in, in this fellowship, and they have faithfully served and loved the Lord with all their heart, mind, soul, and strength. And and just a great testament comes from our life. But we're going to celebrate his life and what God has done in him this Saturday uh, here at 11 o'clock. And I know many of you will want to know that and want to participate in that. Thank you, Jesus. Well, I know since I've been gone, I know that you have missed my jokes. And I have, you know, I, uh, emails and letters, they poured in. And there were these, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> So I thought I had to at least give you one. I couldn't give you more because, you know, I know you were kind of worn out from Pastor Gary. And so, um, so I thought I would just bring you one. I thought this one was pretty good concerning our, our, our focus this morning. So the question is this, or the riddle or the joke is this. Who was the greatest female financier in the Bible? The answer? Pharaoh's daughter, she went down to the bank of the Nile and brought out a prophet.
Wow, I really feel like I'm at home now. This is good. <laughs> God is so good. We are thankful for his word this morning and for the opportunity to be able to share with you. I want to share with you a quote as we start uh, that came from Greg Lowry. In fact, it's in one of his books. And it is this. You know, we sang that song, the B-I-B-L-E, yes, that's the book for me. How many say that's the testimony of your life, Right? We're thankful for the gift that God has given us in His Word. But He brings some words that, that cause us to ponder, cause us to think, and to realize and understand how important the Word of God is to you, to me, to our faith, to our lives. He writes, ultimately, success or failure in the Christian life depends on how much of the Bible you get into your heart and life on a regular basis, and how obedient you are to it. If you are not reading the Word of God, then it only will be a matter of time until you will fall apart spiritually. You know, when I read those words, the first thing that came to my mind was Paul's words to Timothy when he said that the Word, right, the Scripture was God-breathed or was God-inspired and profitable. How many of you have found that to be true? The Word of God is profitable. The Word of God leads us in the pathway of truth. It leads us in the pathway of life. The Word of God, knowing it, hiding God's Word in our heart, living by that Word, how many of you know it brings about the blessing of the Lord? And it leads us in the pathway of salvation, in the pathway of eternal life. Uh, as you know, we have been gone, and gone for a period of time. The uh, board gave us pastor's appreciation like two or three pastor's appreciation ago, they told Crystal and I to take a whole month and just a sabbatical whenever at the time of our choosing. <laughs> now, some may debate whether it was the best time of choosing or not, but there it was. We took it, and some of you wondered where we've been and what we've done. Well, we, uh, our first adventure was we took off from here, and we headed south, we ended up in the Palm Springs area in Indio at a timeshare there, and it was warm. In fact, it was hot. So we did some swimming as we normally do. We love to swim. We love to read. Did swimming reading, but it was pretty much because of the temperatures. I think the highest it got was about 111, and I mean as far as like the highs for the day, and then usually never dropped below 108 as far as on the heat of the day. That was kind of the range of it. So it was kind of like pool, air-conditioned room, air-conditioned car, air-conditioned restaurant. Pool, <laughs> that was kind of the way it went for us. There were some different adventures we decided that to, to refrain from as the, uh, on the news they were announcing, you should not be out in this weather if you don't need to be, and if you do, make sure you take water. You know, there's all those things coming on and stuff. So uh, it, was, it was interesting. Well, it, it got hot, but our next destination was Phoenix, Arizona. <laughs> so, and the reports we began hearing at the end of the week there in the Palm Springs area was that they were expecting it to get up to 120 in Palm Springs. So the whole week that we were in Palm Springs, it actually, as the, for the high of the days at night, it never got below like 94 the whole week we were there. But in the highs, it ranged anywhere from like that 111 to 120 in that range. One day, our car registered 122, and I was like, hmm. So when we got there, as far as the outside adventure of things, <laughs> there wasn't a whole lot. It was hot. It was really, really hot. And, but we had a good time, you know, doing all the things that we do. And uh, so we went through all of this, and the process of us being uh, gone, the beginning of our vacation, our daughter was, uh, became formally engaged to a young man, and uh, so, yeah, that was fun, and uh, so, uh, in fact, yesterday, just bought her wedding dress and all that fun stuff, and I wasn't there, I wasn't invited, but that's okay, and uh, just my pocketbook. <laughs> But anyway, so that's coming up in November. That's a lot. of So we were in the midst, you know, some of the time we spent in Arizona was, you know, a phone conversation and things. Okay, so what are we planning? How are we doing this? Starting to get things all in order. But another thing that we did on vacation, um, which has been a joy, it's been fun for Crystal and I, is we like to find used bookstores. 
And um, I love books. <laughs> if you don't know, I do love books. And uh, I love to go into a used bookstore, both Crystal and I, and, and find a treasure. You know what I mean? Find, find something that you wouldn't order, necessarily ordinarily find. Something that maybe it's a, a treasure because of its price, or maybe it's a treasure because it's something you haven't, you know, I remember finding one book about this dog and its spots or whatever else. Some of you probably know which one I'm talking about. It's been around forever. But it's a kid I remember, as a kid, I remember it being read to me. So this is what happens. Crystal and I go. We went to at least six different bookstores throughout our time away. Um, so we go in, typically, I always go to the Christian book section, and that's where I will head first. Crystal typically always goes to the children's section. Now, that is not because of her IQ. It, it's because, she, one, she looks for some classics with children, but besides that, she also likes to see what are the kids reading. What are some of the things that are happening because of her working with children? She tells me all the time about these new things that she'll hear in children's church, and it's like, what is that? i got to figure out what that is. So, you know, don't tell her it's because of her IQ. I don't want to get, or that I said it's because of her IQ. I don't want her to get in trouble. But, so we did that. We came back home. We did uh, some yard work. I moved a unit of bark dust in our yard, did a few things, and then we took off again, went and saw my sister in Seattle and, and all that kind of stuff. But, man, we had a blast. I'll tell you what, in the time that I've been gone, we have been to so many different church services and uh, which has been really refreshing. And I actually got to sit with, by my wife in church. I was like, wow, you know, that was cool. Worship together. Uh, we went, and then when we weren't at a church, a lot of times we were listening to them on the radio or listening through our phone. And it was just kind of fun to get a sense of just what's happening everywhere. In fact, we went up to, uh, um, uh, we went up, Al, trying to think. Thank you. We went up to Horizon Community up in the Tualatin area anyways, and we saw Pastor Jay and Stacy up there, and he happened to be covering the pulpit that week and, and preached, and it was fun to connect with them. Again, he was formerly here on staff with me when we first came, and um, so there's just, just a lot of neat times. But when we were about all of these different things, especially in the bookstores, there were some things that stood out to me. I loved all of the services, listening to people preach, watching people preach, hearing people preach. Went to a really great church in Phoenix, Arizona, and the worship was like black gospel worship, which is like totally me. It was just like, oh, this is so cool. Um, not me that I can do it, but me that I really like it, right? Um, so, but it was just the word, the word, the word, the word. It was just, it was so rich. And then all these bookstores that we went to, I noticed some things. So you go, you go into some bookstores, and, and the Christian section is small. You go to others, and they have like a really large section of, of Christian reading materials and Bibles and all of that kind of stuff. And then you'll go into some. I remember one store I went into, they took, they took the Christian material and Bibles uh, the Word of God, along with all of the other religious materials of the world, and it's all put in one section and just titled religion. So it's all of these different faiths combined. It's kind of like, you know, close your eyes, pick a book off the shelf, you know what I mean? <laughs> Looking for some direction in your life. It was just, it was a little crazy. But I did note that every store that we went into, every store had at least one Bible. Most of them had several. But they were just amongst a lot of other stuff. The last store that we went to was Evangel, I think Evangel Christian Bookstore in Medford, Oregon. We were on our way home. Old stomping grounds for us, lived in southern Oregon for about six, seven years. And, and so we had gone there often. They still had a store open. We walked into the store, and when we walked into the store, Actually, it was surprising to me because so many Christian stores have closed um, because of internet and all that, but we walk in, and, and the store was actually fairly full and had a lot of different things. Um, but as you walked in, one thing that stood out to me is the largest area and the large, significantly largest area in the bookstore were Bibles. They had Bibles 
of, I haven't seen a collection like that in a long time all in the same place. They had every shape, every size, those with bigger print, smaller print, all different kinds of study guides. You know, I mean, there's like a tons of different versions and all different things you could do, but I was overwhelmed because as you look through the store, there wasn't anything that was as large and significant as the Bible. And you know, it, it hit me as I pondered that a little bit and about, thought about some of these different experiences. The reality is, the Word of God is powerful. The Word of God is profitable. The Word of God can change and transform any life. The Word of God brings hope. It's a living Word. It's not like any of the other books that we see on the shelf. It stands far above all of them. And it would be right, as I was thinking about the Christian bookstore, the Bible should be the significant book in that store, right? It should be the significant book in the whole nation because as people read and as the Holy Spirit works and as eyes are opened, we come to know the truth that changes and transforms our life, that brings about purpose, that brings about healing, that again, brings about a powerful transformation in our life. You know, the Word of God should be a very distinct book, the Holy Word of God to every believer. Question for you this morning, are you passionate about the Word of God? Are we passionate about the Word of God? I want to encourage us that it will make all the difference in the world. It will it'll impact the quality of our life. It will impact our hope, our peace, our joy in the Lord. The Word of God is alive. It is powerful. Again, it leads to peace and our life purpose being fulfilled. Have you ever watched somebody go shopping for a Bible? Or have you ever talked with somebody? The excitement that's there, I love to get a new Bible. It's fun to get a new Bible. I remember my mom, she'd, she'd have her Bibles and she would go through it and it would be worn and it's like every little spot. My mom wrote in her Bibles all kinds of stuff. And, and so all the, the areas around it would all, as soon as it was full, she'd put it down, she'd go get another Bible, buy another Bible and she'd start back through again. And that was just her pattern. And, and she loved the word of God. A person who's getting a new Bible, they're, they're excited. They're excited to get it home and to open it and look through it and read it and study it. There's a passion that is there. I remember the first time that I, and I wasn't the first one to obviously know this, but how many of you got connected online with the Version Bible? What a beautiful tool that is that God has given us. Version. if you haven't been there, you can access, you know, through your phone or online, but, but here is this place where you can go and read many translations from the Scripture. You can read, there's a gazillion different Bible reading programs besides devotional themes and thoughts, and it just goes on. It's this endless supply that really is all focused around the Word of God, the Word of God. And it's powerful. And you see somebody come into connection with that, and it's like the first time <laughs> that I got connected with version. you know, you can go through and you start, you start selecting all these different things, like, oh, I want to do that devotional, I want to do that devotional, I want to, you start doing this. I had so many things that were marked and set apart, there was no way I could possibly keep up with it. You know, it's like, okay, let's back off. We could take these one or two at a time. We don't have to do them all at the same time. But it was exciting. I love to be in the Word of God. And my friends, I want us to understand that it's God's desire for you and I to be passionate for his word. Passionate for his word. It's not just a Bible that we have in our home or that we bring in here or that we look again at our phone, but it makes all the difference. I agree with Greg Lowry in this aspect that, that when we are a people of the word, when we love the word and we receive the word and we walk in obedience to the word, it transforms our lives. It transforms our way. We come to a story here in the scripture about King Josiah King Josiah, he was the boy king. We call him that because he became king when he was how old? Anybody know? Eight. Eight. 
when he was eight years old. Could you imagine <laughs> becoming a king of a people at eight years old? If you look in your Bibles, I want to just read through the story and then going to bring some note and comment to it and application for us. Uh, I want to step back to chapter 21 for a moment. And chapter 21 and verse 1 reads this, Manasseh was 12 years old when he became king, and he reigned 55 years in Jerusalem. Verse 2 says that he did evil in the sight of the Lord. Manasseh was King Josiah's grandfather. Now, if you flip, well, if you flip the page like I am doing, and you come to the latter part of chapter 21, you'll look at verse 19, and it says, Amon was 22 years old when he became king, and he reigned two years in Jerusalem. Anybody know who this is? This is Josiah's father. So you have a grandfather, and now you have a father, and it says in verse 20, and he did evil in the sight of the Lord, just as his father Manasseh had done. In fact, the scripture talks about what they had done as it was an abomination unto the Lord. Verse 23, the servants of Ammon conspired against him and killed the king in his own house. So he's assassinated. And the latter part of that verse says, and the people of the land made his son Josiah king in his place. So follow along. I'll try to get you through this really quick. Chapter 22. Josiah was eight years old when he became king, and he reigned 31 years in Jerusalem. Verse 2. And he did what was right in the sight of the Lord and walked in all the ways of his father, David. Oh, wait a second. His father wasn't David. His father was Amon. David. <gasps> David, the man after God's own heart. Huh. King David. Verse 3. Now it came to pass in the 18th year of King Josiah. So now we've jumped ahead 18 years. That again, the, the king sent Shaphan, the scribe, um, again to the house of the Lord. Verse 4. Go up to Hilkiah the high priest that he may count the money which has been brought into the house of the Lord which the doorkeepers have gathered from the people. And let them deliver it into the hand of those doing the work who are the overseers in the house of the Lord. Let them give it to them who are in the house of the Lord doing the work to repair the damages of the house. So here's the picture. So Josiah, again, they've, they've collected things, right? They've collected uh, money. They've collected things to be able to repair the house of the Lord. Remember that. Josiah is king, 18 years. They're repairing the house of the Lord. Verse 8 then Hilkiah the high priest said to Shaphan the scribe, I have found the book of the law in the house of the Lord. And Hilkiah gave the book to Shaphan, and he read it. So Shaphan the scribe went to the king, bringing the king the word. If you'll jump with me to verse 10. <clears throat> Hilkiah the priest has given me this book. And Shaphan read it before the king. Verse 11, the king heard the words of the book and the law. He tore his clothes and he commanded Hilkiah the priest. Verse 13, go inquire of the Lord for me, for the people and for all Judah concerning the words of this book. And you'll see down here, our fathers have not obeyed the words of this book. So verse 14, Hilkiah the priest, he goes and he comes to a prophetess is what the scripture says. And this verse 15, as he goes to inquire before this prophetess, she says to those that came, thus says the Lord God of Israel, tell the man who sent you to me, thus says the Lord, behold, I will bring calamity on this place and on its inhabitants, all the words of this book which the king of Judah has read, because they have forsaken me and burnt incense to other gods, that they might provoke me to anger with all the works of their hands. Therefore... My wrath shall be aroused against this place and shall not be quenched. But as for the king of Judah, speaking to Josiah, right? The king of Judah who sent you to inquire of the Lord, in this manner you shall speak to him, thus says the Lord God, concerning the words which I, you have heard, because your heart, Josiah, was tender, and you humbled yourself before the Lord when you heard what I spoke against this place and against its inhabitants, that they would become desolate and a curse. You tore your clothes, you wept before me, the scripture says, I have heard you. 
And in verse 20, this is what he says. I will gather you to your fathers, and you will be gathered to your grave in peace. And your eyes shall not see all the calamity which I will bring on this place. Are you with me still? You passionate about the Word of God? So you let me read a few more verses? Okay, so here we go. 23. Now the king gathered all the elders of Judah and Jerusalem to him. The king went up to the house of the Lord with all the men of Judah and with him and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, with the priests and the prophets and all the people, both small and great. And he read in their hearing all the words of the book of the covenant, which had been found in the house of the Lord. Verse 3, the king stood by the pillar and made a covenant before the Lord to follow the Lord, to keep his commandments and his testimonies and his statutes with all his heart, all his soul, to perform the words of this covenant that were written in this book. And all the people took a stand for the covenant. Isn't that an exciting story? It's an awesome story. And in fact, the testimony that comes of Josiah is that, that he served, he followed the Lord and didn't turn to the right or to the left all of his days. An amazing, amazing story. Josiah was passionate about the Word of God. He was passionate, again, about what had been read, what had been spoken. Eight years old. It's a miraculous thing when you think about it. The grandfather and the father, again, had walked in darkness and wickedness, and they brought about and released all this idolatry in the land. But here's a kid, eight years old, who follows not in his father and grandfather's way, but again, he has the heart of David. And he walks, again, in alignment with a heart that is for God. Incredible. Incredible. The Word of God. Isn't it interesting to think about? Here are the chosen people of God, and somehow they lost the Word. They lost the law. Somehow they'd forgotten. Somehow it'd been misplaced. Somehow there was this generation or this group of people who did not know the word of the Lord. And now they were standing in a place of judgment. But the exciting thing about this is that Josiah, because of his response to the word of the Lord, not only did it bring personal revival, but it brought revival to a whole nation. is they renewed their covenant with Almighty God, is they renewed their covenant with Jehovah. Now, as we look at Josiah's life, and, and we read through this passage, we recognize that, that again, his, his heart was tender and humble before the Lord, because here he is, the word of God, yes, is lost, but they're in reparation of the temple, of the tabernacle, right? They're, they're putting everything together repairing. So he has a heart towards the Lord. But again, as the book is is found and as the book is presented and as the words come forth, what's Josiah's response? In the scripture it says, he tore his... So you're like, well, wow, that's kind of a weird response. He was, his heart was convicted, but even more than that, it was, it, the ripping was, it was a grief. It was a grieving. It was like, how could we have misplaced and lost the word of God? This is why we're in the place that we're in. Mourning. Grief. I will pause and I will just say this. The church of God needs a renewal and a revival in the Word of God. And our nation in this land that we live in, 
we wonder why things are where they are or why we might be seeing all of this stuff about us, but I want to remind you, my friends, as a nation, we have rejected the Word of God. We've forgotten the Word of God. In fact, isn't it amazing when they talk about, when, when people talk about the condition of the church, they talk about the church being illiterate to the Word of God, and this is our whole foundation for salvation and truth. We don't realize the power that is therein. We don't realize the direction. We don't realize that it's as we hear the word of God that faith arises and our lives are changed. We, don't, we forget that it's as we walk in obedience to the word of God that we experience the blessing and the favor of God. The word of God. How could it be that people had forgotten that they didn't know its contents Again, they were, they were cut to the heart, as the New Testament says. <laughs> Robes were torn. Josiah. <laughs> Josiah inquires of the Lord. He's grieved, but he inquires of the Lord. What is that? That's a hungry heart, isn't it, my friends? He inquires of the Lord. I, I, I want to know. I need to know. In light of this word that is here, I need to know. What does God say of this. I love the scripture. Because your heart, prophet has spoke for the Lord, because your heart was responsive and you humbled yourself, this is in chapter 22, verse 18 through 20, because your heart was responsive and you humbled yourself before the Lord when you heard what I had spoken against this place. Because you tore your robes and you wept in my presence, I also have heard you, declares the Lord. I will gather you to your, to your ancestors, and you will be buried in peace. <laughs> wow. What an incredible transformation. A tender heart. A tender heart, a humble spirit. Who does that remind you of? It reminds us of King David once again. We see hearts that are the same, attitudes that are the same. Do you remember these scriptures? I think we've got them. I've got them up on the screen for you. Again, Psalms, Psalms of David. Listen to his, his response concerning the word. Psalm 19, 15. I meditate on your precepts and consider your ways. David was passionate about the word of the God. Go to the next one. I have chosen the way of faithfulness. I have set my heart on your laws. Does that sound like you and me? Set our hearts on the laws? I hope so. The next one. Oh, how I love your law. I meditate on it all day long. We also read in the Psalms, I meditate day and night. The Word of God, all of those things expressing a passion for the Word of God. Josiah was passionate about the precepts of God. He was passionate about the law of God, the direction, the Word of God in his life. There was a respect and there was a desire for the Word. What a powerful thing that took place because of Josiah's action and proper response to the word of God. He became a powerful influence and he led a nation back to God. So too, my friends, any believer in any church who would choose to love God, to be passionate about his word, to be passionate about his presence, to seek to love the Lord our God with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength. Those of us that would embrace that pathway would enter into that adventure. I want you to know your impact, your influence will be significant in the kingdom of God. And any church that will align itself to love the word of God, to seek God's word, to understand it, to put it into practice, I want you to know that church will turn their city upside down. The word of God is powerful. 
But unfortunately, when we don't know the word of God or when we've forgotten the word of God, what do we do? We begin to live according to the world's standards. We begin to live according to what we think is right in our own eyes. And what happened in the time of the judges with all of those people that did live life in such a way? They did that was right in their own eyes, and what happened? It led them into sin. It led them into pain and destruction and suffering. They finally repent. They turn to the Lord. They have a period of peace. And then you forget, and you forsake, and you start into the cycle again. The Word of God. Are we passionate about the Word of God? Are we passionate like Josiah? Are we passionate like David? Are we passionate even when we hear a word or we read in the Scripture, a, a, a focus of Scripture that, that maybe convicts our hearts rather than throwing it away? Are we, oh God, I beseech you. Lord, what can we do about this? I don't know if I have the strength for this. Lord, I, I need you. I know the way I need to walk, but I need your strength and your power. And God is so faithful, always by his spirit, to come and to help us. Josiah was passionate, and you and I need to be passionate. We need to have a respect. We need to have a zealousness. We need to have a love that leads us to embrace the word of God, to search and to seek for truth, and not just give ourselves to men's thoughts or philosophies or ideologies. My friend, the word of God stands above every other self-help book on the shelf. Do we believe it? And are we living in that fashion? When we have questions, where do we go first? To whom do we run? Where's our book of reference and what is true and what is not true? The scripture, the word of God is powerful. But my friends, as you and I have those same qualities as David, those same qualities as Josiah, as our bent and our focus in life is to love God with all of our heart, to be a person of the word, to walk in alignments, to know the will of God and walk in alignment with that. Is that as our desire, my friends? We will have great impact on this world that we live. So the story. Josiah. King Josiah, amazing at such a young age to have such wisdom. Josiah recognized that the need... Again, the need for this word was not just for him. This need was for everybody else too. This focus of, of repentance, of this, this focus of, again of embracing the word of God was not just for him, but it was for all people. Uh, in 2 Chronicles 34, again, looking at the story, it said the king stood and renewed the covenant in the presence of the Lord to follow the Lord, to keep his commandments, statutes, decrees with all his heart and all his soul, to obey the words of the covenant written in this book. But you look in the latter part of this passage, chapter 23 and verse 3, and what does it say? He led the people in the same pathway. He led them to renew the covenant. He led them to embrace the word revival. <laughs> it is so interesting, my friends, when we think about Josiah's testimony. It wasn't just one of word, it was one of action, because what did he do? He went, through, he went through to remove idolatry from the land. The word of God. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall worship the Lord, your God, only. That's not the way of his father. It wasn't the way of his grandfather. But Josiah, with his tender heart towards the Lord, again, led the nation, led the people, propelled them forward. Church, my friends, if you and I will rue the new, the covenant of seeking God with all of our hearts, if we will remember the importance, not just of reading, but of studying, of meditating, of, 
of meditating, of memorizing, hiding God's Word in our heart, if we will renew ourselves to know God and to know His Word, we won't be disappointed. And we will probably find a greater sense of peace and joy, of rest and safety. You see, my friends, when we have the Word of God and when it's hidden in our heart, times, are, times bring forth different circumstances and situations. What a horrible thing that happened in Hawaii this past week. I've been in that place. You guys have been in that place too, I know. As I saw pictures, there were, it was like, I've been there. I've, in fact, that was one of our favorite areas of Hawaii. But you know, when you're in the midst of a crisis or a tragedy or something that's happening in the world of such a nature, what are, you, what are we going to fall back on? What are we going to hold to? Are we going to remember what the Word of God has said that we don't have to? We don't have to be defeated. We may grieve that loss, but the truth is this. God will make a way for us. He will provide. He will meet us in our times of need. He is faithful. He's instructed us to cast our cares on Him. But if we don't know all these promises and all the truth that is there, it's not going to lead us in the blessed way. It's not going to lead us in that pathway that God desires for His people to be in. So, in bringing this to a close, just ask some questions. And, and we're not finished with this because I have... I've got more to share over the next few weeks concerning the Word of God. God is bringing transformation to us as a fellowship. It doesn't mean we've been bad. It means Jesus wants to lead us to more. Amen. His purpose and His plan for this church is bigger than what we are right now. It's bigger than what we're doing right now. But we cannot influence as he wants us to influence. We cannot share the truth that we don't know ourselves. We can't expect to move forward and have great impact and influence and be in alignment with God's purpose and plan if we leave the word of God out of our lives. So, simple question, don't answer. <laughs> you always need to bring that preface so you know. On a scale of 1 to 10 in your own personal spiritual walk, what priority does the Word of God hold in your life? David meditated on the Scripture day and night. Wow. How often are we in this book? Do we, are we passionate? Do we recognize, you know what's so fun about this? Do we, do we realize that God wants to reveal to us himself, his glory? Yes, and his word and direction in our lives. And he's given us an incredible gift. Do we struggle? Do we get frustrated? I've been there. Times where we, I, got, I need to renew, I need to spend more time in the presence of Jesus. How many of you know our times with Jesus and His Word is to be a life-giving experience, right? When we go to the Word, do we go to the Word just so we can check off a box, or do we go to the Word to meet with Jesus? to hear what he might speak to us, what he might say to us. Okay, I'm very gonna very quickly and we're gonna close and I'm not gonna expound on these things, maybe a sentence or two. I wanna give you four things that I want you to begin praying as a body of Christ. I want you to begin praying for yourself and I want us to begin praying for the body of Christ. And my friends, pray at Valley Life Center but pray it beyond. 
We need a move of God that raises up every church that's preaching Jesus. Okay, right from the Psalms. We go to Psalm 119, and the psalmist prays many different things. And how many of you know that when you and I come and we pray and we ask of God, He hears. And He will honor our honest prayer. So here's the first one. How is it that you and I can help fuel this passion for God's Word? The first one comes out of Psalm 119, verse 36. Psalm 119, verse 36, the psalmist says, incline my heart to your word. Incline my heart to your word. This is the focus of asking God to transform your heart for or to his word. Word, God, bring within me, Lord, a desire for your word. Incline my heart. The heart is like the, the center of our affections, right? So incline my heart to your word. It's, Lord, bring forth, a, bring forth Lord, a, a, an excitement, a passion for your word. A desire. Do you think God wants to answer that kind of prayer? Hey, Lord, I, I confess I'm honest. Lord, I, I've not been in the Word as I should have been. Lord, I'm not walking in obedience. I know right here this has been a struggle area. God, would you incline my heart to your Word? Would you bring forth in me, Lord, a desire? Lord, I invite the Holy Spirit. Come, Lord, move, change, draw, woo. Remind. Secondly, same chapter, 119 of Psalm, verse 37. Turn my eyes from worthless things. The psalmist prays, turn my eyes from looking at worthless things and give me life in your ways is what the scripture. How many of you know we're, we're inclined? I mean, we're sheep, right? We wander, we stray. We're inclined. The world is vying for our attention. It's vying for our time. But I want to encourage you, church. We slip into, we, we just slip into deceitful ways and, and practices. We put other things way before the Lord or His presence or spending time in His Word. Things that are worthless in nature. Just turn it into a prayer. God, help me to turn my eyes from those things that are worthless. Lord, reveal to me those things that are, that are eating up my time, those things, Lord, that are distracting me from you. Reveal that to me. Lord, let me see the value in knowing you and the end of this worthless distraction. What a prayer to pray. Verse 18, Psalm 119, the psalmist prays, open my eyes to see the wonderful things in your word. I don't know about you, but that's a regular practice of my prayer time before the Lord. When I'm, when I'm going to read scripture, I'm going to pray, my focus is, Jesus, I want to know you more. Lord, open my eyes to who you are. Lord, open my eyes to your direction for me in this day. Lord, lead me. Bring light to my pathway. Open my eyes to see the wonderful things in your word. You know what this makes me think about? It makes me think about Moses and the, and the cry and the focus of show me your glory. Did you know God wants to show us his glory? He wants to reveal himself to us in greater measure, in greater way all the time. What a beautiful thing when the heart of the believer, when the child of God comes into agreement with the heart of God and we say, open my eyes to see the wonderful things, Lord, of who you are. To see your glory. To know your will for my life. And lastly, verse 27 of Psalm 119. Make me understand the way of your precepts. And I will meditate on your wondrous works. 
Make me understand the way of your precepts. <laughs> you ever been in the scripture reading? And you're like, this is confusing. I'm, I'm not even exactly sure. <laughs> I'm not sure what to do with this. How many of you know God's given us a helper? If you placed your faith in Christ Jesus for salvation, the Holy Spirit lives in you. You are a child of God. And the Holy Spirit will lead us and guide us into all truth. The Holy Spirit will take the word and will bring it alive. There are many times where I've gone and read through a passage or even studied through a passage and I'm just like, God, I, I'm not completely getting this. I don't quite understand this. I need your help. And boom, there's just, there's something. Either something to come across or the Holy Spirit just speaks something to my heart and it's like, I see it differently. He illuminates, the Holy Spirit illuminates the word of God to us and brings that understanding. Church, we should be praying for understanding all the time. How many of you know God knows all things? And how many of you know he's sovereign, he's got a plan? So I don't know about you, I think if there's anybody we should put our trust in, be the person of God. Lord, give me understanding so that I can meditate on your works all day. Give me understanding of what the scripture says so the Lord, as I, as I live this as I walk this, as I, I can meditate, Lord, on all these incredible things that you're doing in and will do in and through my life. Are you passionate for the word of God? Will we pray these prayers and invite? We say, oh, pastor, on a scale of one to ten, I mean, boy, I'm in the best sense, I'm pushing to a three, maybe. You know what I love about the Lord? He's not condemning you because you're at a three and you should be at a seven. <laughs> because you're almost to a three and really ten is what we're shooting for. My friends, Jesus is, there's always, it's always invitation. Want to see my glory? Do you want to know more of who I am? Do you want to experience my presence and my power? Do you want to experience transformation? You want to experience hearing? You want to truly describe your life as the abundant life in Christ? Do you want to be able to stand when everything else around you seems like it's blowing and in a whirlwind and be confident and at peace? Do we want to win our community? Do we want to see things change in our nation? We can't do it if we reject the Word of God. The Word of God has got to be foundational for you and for me. And we must understand if we've read it once, if we've read it twice, if we've read it three times, it's still not enough. It's a living word. I can't tell you how many times I've gone back to the same passage and the Lord brought about something or spoke something new. It's a life-giving word. And we need it to be healthy. We need it to be effective. We need it to fulfill our purpose here on this earth. Starting next week, you will see, you probably will never want me to leave on a sabbatical again. <laughs> All these things he's brought back, what are we doing? Um, this next year, as we read through the scripture, we're going to celebrate in Sunday, don't, haven't forgot about all of us that have been reading through this year. We're going to celebrate middle of September. But I'm going to present to you three different options for reading the Scripture. Those that want to read through the Bible in a year chronologically, there will be, we're going to have a plan out for the whole year that we're just going to give to you, boom. Those that want to read through the Scripture, maybe not chronologically, but you just want to read from Genesis through Revelation, we'll have that available for you. And then for others of you who maybe haven't read through the Bible in a year, or maybe you're just getting new, we have the focus of reading through the New Testament with Psalms and Proverbs 
in a year. Something we're going to begin as a church. I already have my first month made up. This was a blast. I've just really enjoyed this. God dropped this on my heart before I left, and it's exciting. But we're going to memorize Scripture together. Uh, Every month, we're going to be focusing on a specific verse or passage of Scripture. And when we're here together on Sunday mornings for that month, we'll recite that Scripture together. So if it's a four or five Sunday month, we'll recite it four or five times. My encouragement is you'll receive a card. You'll have the Scripture on there. I encourage you just to read it every day. encourage you once a week just to write it out. But we're going to hide God's Word in our heart, believing that God will use the Word hidden in our heart to bring forth life. We need to know the Word. We're going to dig deeper. Coming up in... September, second Sunday of September. It's going to be our small group Sunday. Not Sunday, Sunday. Sunday. We're going to introduce to you the thought, the ministry, and the concept of small groups. Appreciate Jim Pike and his help with all of this. And we're going to encourage people to come together in fellowship and seeking God and learning his word. My encouragement to you, just as the people of God, let's seek God with all of our hearts. Our lives will be transformed. Our church will be transformed. This community will be transformed. Let the word of God, let it come alive to you in this next year. Or as it becomes alive in us, you better believe God's going to be bringing people into our pathway. And we'll be able to share not just what's committed to memory, but we'll be able to share the testimony of what Christ is doing in us. I think it's a good word. Amen? It's God's word. Would you stand? Would you stand this morning? <laughs> I'm excited. Thank you for letting me be away to get refreshed. Thank you for being here this morning. How about we pray a prayer of invitation before the Lord? Could we do that? Would you just would you just lift your hands to the Lord just an act of surrender and I just I'm going to lead us in a prayer, a prayer of invitation. Would you repeat after me if this is your heart? Heavenly Father, I thank you for the good news of Jesus Christ. I thank you for salvation. I thank you for new life. And I thank you for eternal life. I come to you, O Lord, and express my desire to know you, to know your word. In a greater way. Help me, O God. May my heart long for your word. May your word become my treasure that reveals you and your way, the pathway to blessing and effectiveness in the harvest. Change my life, Lord. Show me those things that are worthless those things that are distracting me from knowing you more. I give myself to you, to the study of your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
You know what? There was a uh, wow as we pr- as we prayed that there was a there was a weighty there was a weighty sense in that. Um, the Lord's attention is directed towards us, my friends. I don't mean that like in a weird way, but He was attentive to that prayer. Thank you, Jesus. Would you just just now just thank Him? Just thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayer today. Change and transform our lives and our church, God. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your embrace, Lord, today. Thank you, Jesus. And so the adventure begins. Ah! Oh, my goodness. God is so fun. I love you. Most importantly, the Lord loves you. If you need further prayer or ministry, our pastors and our prayer partners will be up here to pray with you. I love you. Don't miss next week. It's good.